uh, a scripture that you, you will have heard uh, coming out of me quite a bit lately, uh, which is, we are Christ's ambassadors, 2 Corinthians 5. He tells us that he is, it is as if God is making, or Christ himself is making his appeal through us. So some, just talking about, uh, on, on our behalf, as it were, Christ making his appeal through us. So in this community, it would be as if you are the hands and feet of Jesus. It would be as if not just the hands and feet, but the mouthpiece. And so that really is to know him and to make him known. And that's really, um, as we, we start in this year, where everything is stemmed from, just really talking about uh, going into this year, one uh, full dependence, uh, unfamiliar, not going in our own ra- way, our own route, um, what we think, but really a place of surrender uh, and a place of getting the things back into first. And that's what this whole, this whole January has been about. It's about getting things back in the first place in the, or in order. And so we're going we're gonna to stay with that. And today we're going to uh, want to talk to you about staying sharp, staying sharp. And <clears throat> as we come into this year, uh, it's important that we would stay sharp. And as we continue in this year, uh, even a, just a little, bit, a, a little bit ago, how many of you know um, when you ho- put something in first place, um, it's a fight to keep it in first I mean, how, how many of you know, like, if just because, just because the L.A. or is it the Rams, I think it's L.A. Rams, won the Super Bowl last year, they're not even in the playoffs still, okay? Were, I don't even know that they made the playoffs, but were they, were, they were, they were first, weren't they? They were first, but how many of you know it's a fight to hold on to first? You could be first last year in Alma basketball, or you could be first last year in football, but just because you were first doesn't mean you are first. It's a fight to hold on to first. And guess what? Just because you start the year with getting some things and in, in putting the things in the right order and getting the things in first, it's going to be a fight to hold on to first. And, and, and the Lord tells us that, it, you know, and what would be some of the reasons why, even like the Arkansas, the Razorbacks, the Hogs, right? Some of you are familiar, some of you don't like hog, the Hogs. Some of you, uh, you know, this is God's house, so if you don't, no. No, but some of you don't like the Hogs, and that's, that's so you don't, or you don't really care. But or, our basketball team was poised to be a top 10 contender, uh, and then we had a couple of players, one get hurt, another one bruises his knee to go get drafted to the NBA, so he's sitting out for the rest of the year to go get, right? So we're just average. Well, so why are we not in first? Because we had some things happen. How many of you ever know that sometimes things happen in your life that cause you to fall from that place of first? You know, anybody ever have, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe you, there was a relationship with somebody and something happened, and so what, what once was, everything was going good, now it's not going so good. All of a sudden, the, every, I mean, you were planned, the plan was this, but now this happened. The plan was that, but now that happened. The plan was, and so there's a fight to, be in, to stay in first. And um, how many of you remember in Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible tells us that um, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, right, tells us that looking unto him, he tells us um, in verse 2, it tells us to, to strip off, I think it's verse 2, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, 1 or 2, um, if you have it up there, otherwise I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm not following a specific order this morning. Um, I am trying to get back to it, however. <laughs> Um, but therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, okay, a crowd. So there's a crowd. There's, there's a picture of a race going on here uh, not, or, or a contest. It says, let us, verse 1, throw off every encumbrance and sin. Or this one would say weight and sin. So two things. What? Weights and sins. And so, um, or, or in this translation, it says encumbrance. Um, there's things that would slow you down or keep you from being uh, holding to first, Right? How many of you know when things get, when, when, what are the reasons that we quit? You get hurt, right? Anybody, anybody, or things get tired, you get tired, right? You, so there's things that would slow you down, things that would hurt you, but uh, your, your confidence is shaking because of what you don't have or what you did have, and now you, there's just, there's just race. And he tells us that if we're going to run well, we're going to have to make sure we're not having certain things attached to us or laying aside, casting aside the hindrances 
or, and, 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 and the weights and casting aside or laying aside the sin which so easily ensnared us. We're going to talk just maybe a little bit about this this morning, but let's just hit these two things real quick. He said, lay aside the weights. He didn't say how to get rid of the sin. Lay aside the weight and the sin so you can lay. You, there's things that are in our, that we're to lay aside. We're going to talk about that uh, for, for in a moment. Um, but the sin, the answer to getting rid of sin is just very simple. It's repent. It's just repent, which means that you would say, and call it sin what it is, wherever you're missing it, and just say, you know what, Lord? I repent. I turn from that, and I turn. That's, that's how you lay that aside. You can't shake it off. You can't clean yourself. It's like trying to clean the mud off. It's not working, right? You just say, Lord, 1 John 1, 9, if you confess... He's faithful just to cleanse you from all unright. That's how, you, that's how you get rid of that, right? So you missed it. You messed up. Okay, don't let that, don't let that, you totally biffed it. You totally royally fell flat on your face. Okay, all right. You missed the mark. We got it. So what are we going to do? We're going to let it determine tomorrow and the next day and the next day? No, no. Stop where you're at. Say, Lord, I missed it last night or I missed it, the, the, I missed it and, and my heart you don't, have, you don't need tears. Repentance is not tears. Repentance is a decision. And say, Lord, I see where I missed it. I see where I chose. And I'm now making a choice. And I'm, I'm, and I'm I, to choose your way concerning this. I'm asking you not only for your forgiveness, but to help me and for your grace to will and to do according to your good pleasure. Okay? So that, get, let's get rid of that. But then let's just talk a little bit to... to today about some weights, some things that could hold, that maybe get, we get tangled up in. And I, I wanted to just, uh, uh, we're gonna, again, we're talking this morning about staying sharp, and I'm going to try to get all the way back and come back through. Um, but one of the things that happens in a race uh, or in a contest, oftentimes, it, we saw this with the hogs uh, this year, um, we don't finish as well because we got hurt. Now, here's the thing. It's so important for you. You doing the will of God and you running the race is so important because other people will be impacted by you for Christ. When you do what God's asked you to do, other people will be impacted for Christ. This is why there's such an attack on your life to do whatever, not to do what you can do whatever you want to do instead of living under under authority and being a follower of Christ because there's this he knows that if you do what God called you to do the kingdom of God will be impacted for God's glory we like we have this on our mirror at home beyond church is having a huge impact and reaching many people for the kingdom of God Beyond Church is having a huge impact in reaching many people for the kingdom of God. You know what, who Beyond Church is? It's the people. It's not just past. Beyond Church is having a huge impact in reaching many people for the kingdom of God. It's a, it's my, it's a testimony. It's, a de, it's not just a testimony, but it's also a declaration. It's both. It's, it's, I'm testifying what God has done, but also declaring what's going to be. Because we're going to do what God's called us to do. And so... I want to um, I want to ask you a question this morning. Um, how many of you have been hurt by somebody? Raise your hands. If be bold. Keep them up. Keep them up. Okay. How many of you have been been healed? So does now I would. This is this is oftentimes what happens is we've been hurt, and we can we can uh, we can go back to the hurt. Okay, but let me ask you this: If you've been healed, where? Well, I was hurt. Was yeah. We like. I think our testimony needs to be more about how we had one that restored our soul, and one who healed the broken heart. Because if not, if it's not that we've been healed and it's that we've been hurt, what will happen is, it's a good excuse to bow out. Now, there's two things we're talking this morning about staying sharp. There's two things that the enemy's after, two things. Number one is the word. Okay, we're going to look at that here in a moment. Number two is relationships. 
Because these relationships, these are the ones that are to encourage you. With what? The word. <laughs> so it's not, he, well, he's gonna, he wants to take the word from you, but he also wants to attack the one that would, ones that would bring the word to you. Or who the word would, could come through. So the word and relationships. Let's look at this, uh, 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be sober, or be alert and be sober. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to, to devour. Now, I want to hit on that real quick. Your enemy. You have an enemy. And even what I asked you was kind of a quick trick question, a little bit. Uh, when I said, how many of you have been hurt by somebody? It's so easy for us to assign hurt to people instead of the author or the one behind it, right? It's like um, if, if I was to dump this water bottle on you, right, you could blame the water for getting you wet, or you could, the one that was manipulating the water. Who did it? Who, who, who got you wet? Well, the, I'm just so upset about the water. It's not, it's not I mean, okay, you, come on. I'm just telling you, yeah, well, they had a choice. The water doesn't have a choice. I get that, but eyes were probably blinded and manipulated, not seeing correctly. So John 10.10 10 tells us the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. His fingerprints. The Bible tells us in Ephesians that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our contest is not against flesh and blood. So this is a start of even healing in, in our lives because the enemy would love us to bow out because we're hurt or we're damaged and we're not restored back to full health is that we would assign the hurt to where it actually was authored from so that we know how to wrestle and we know how to fight and we know what they're really after is, is to divide relationships or to divide the, place, uh, the places that God has set me. In the church, I've, I've heard people talk about uh, People talk about, uh, you know, well, I don't go to church because there are just a bunch of hypocrites there. I don't know da, that. Da, da. Like, there's a lot of people that aren't in church today or not in a place that God has set. The Bible tells us God sets each person in the body as he sees fit. In other words, there's a connection there and there's a flow where there's connection, there's flow, there's life. But they're not in that place because they've been hurt. Because they've been hurt and that has, hurt has been assigned to people. And if they've been hurt and that's been assigned to people, then they're going to look to people to bring healing there. But I, I can't heal you. I can't heal you. And most, most often hurt is not done maliciously. It is what, in a sense, what was done was, and maybe it was out of intent, but because they were hurt, but it's just a lot. Most all of the things is miscommunication. You said this because they said this. Well, I didn't say that to say, how many of you have, I, but I felt this and I thought you were doing this and then I heard this. I never said that. It gets confusing. Who's the author of confusion? Satan. So it's important, number one, today that we understand that we have an enemy. Now, does that mean there's a devil behind every door? No. But it does, we got to understand that when, when sin entered, death entered. All right, when we came underneath of a different word, which was Satan's word in the garden, what happened is, is sin and death entered. So we're in this place where, of the earth where that is here, okay? So it's going to be happening. But God, God's way isn't that way. God's way is pre-serpent, and God's way is heaven, where there is none of that stuff. Right now, we have the opportunity to, to walk in those bookends here and now by coming under God's word and how I would treat you and how I would treat others and how I would uh, look, uh, have, allow God to heal me, all right? But again, it says this, 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober uh, uh, because your enemy, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So he wants to attack the word and he wants to attack those who would bring the word. Mark chapter 4, 13, he tells us this. If you don't understand this, you won't understand any of the word. This is so important because what I'm talking about this, this morning about staying sharp is I'm really talking about the authority of this book in your and my life. The authority of this book 
in your in my life. He says, if you don't understand this in Mark chapter 4, verse 13, that <clears throat> Satan comes to take away, excuse me, he says, if this is Mark 4, 13. He says, if you don't understand this parable, the parable of the sower, you won't understand any of them. So we gotta get this down. This whole parable in Mark chapter 4 is about the word of God being sown into the hearts of men. And who's after the word? Satan is after the word. Mark 4.15 says that Satan, he comes to steal the word. The word, he says, Satan comes. And again, that word Satan is your adversary or enemy. Your enemy that we just read. You got an enemy, okay? He comes immediately and takes away what? The word that was sown in hearts. He wants to take the word. Now, this is not just something in Mark chapter 4. This is something you see in the very beginning, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty, was more crafty than any beast, or was more cunning. That word cunning is translated crafty. Some places is translated subtle. Did you know if you were to look that up in the Hebrew, it means these things, crafty, shrewd, or sensible. Only three words that, that we see. That crafty, shrewd, or sensible. Now the serpent was more sensible. Interesting, put that one there. Than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say? What was he after? The word. So we see it in the law first men. He's after the word. We see it here in Mark chapter 4 where Jesus is talking. He's saying, listen, the enemy, he's, gonna, he's coming after the word. If you don't get anything else... Understand this, that Satan wants to take this from you. He'll want to take it from you however he can, whether it's from your heart or from it even being sown into your heart, from being in that place where you would be able to encourage one another and sharpen one another with the word of God, where you'd be in relationship and, 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 and it's surrounded and centered around the word of God. Look at this, look at this next verse. Um, it says this, uh, 2 Corinthians 11.3. It says, <laughs> this is so cool. 2 Corinthians 11.3. It says this. Uh, again, Paul's talking to the church at Corinth. He says, but I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve. Okay, How did he deceive her? Well, because he was sensible. He didn't say, I'm the devil and I got bad. I want to kill you. No. Very sensible. He said, um... Guys, I'm concerned. I'm concerned that the sensibility of this age, of this time, the same way, wait a minute, this is not anything new. It's not anything new. I think it's important that you and I understand that the, the, though knowledge has increased, it's not new that the enemy would take the word from people by appealing to their reasoning. Because their reasoning, your reasoning, my reasoning is about this long. We see about this much. The smartest people might see this much. But God, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 46, he's the one that told us the end from the beginning. You'll find that the word of God, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, Romans 12, he tells, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It doesn't say the remodeling of your mind. We're in this HGTV culture where we want to remodel things, but God said, I don't need to remodel. I need it to be made renew. So what he made heaven like was what he made the garden like. It wasn't like, well, I see a better way to do it. I think we should go with those light grays and the whites now because those will always be in and avoid that green carpet. Like 2023, this word is still the same because God went ahead and he saw, he, he speaks with the end in mind. So sometimes when, 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 when we hear things in the word and we feel like, well, that's going to rob my fun or that's, I, that's not the way I'm going to be missing out on this. And the, he's speaking with the end in mind. He can see your tomorrow when all that you can feel about is today. He can see, he can, he can see your, your, the, the words that you want to say, and he's like, hey, and you're like, yeah, well, I could, and they, and he's like, there's a bunch of pieces, 
and a whole lot more than you see that what you're about to unleash in this moment. He's speaking with the end in mind. So he says this, but I fear lest some, somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds might be co- corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I love that. Simple. This right here, as technology has increased, you know, and just the computer, I mean, shoot, look at the phones, like you can do anything. Because of technology, right? Like, wow, 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 wow. And all these programs and all these systems and all these codings and all these things is causing this one little thing to work. Just for one little thing to work, there's all this stuff. And because, because things are so complicated, because things are so, so, there's so much knowledge and so much insight, let me just say, all of those things, God knew that they would be there. He's the one that made light. In all of its facets, you know, where it would split into a rainbow with, from a, with a prison, a prism. You're like, whoa, look at what we can do with a prism. Yeah, he knew that. He, he knew that, oh, you, in light, you can see this, you can hear this, you can see through this, you can be there like this. Like, light. He, okay, so he, he knows a little bit more than us. But he says that, that because it's so simple... You wouldn't trust it. Because it's so simple, it's too simple. It doesn't make enough sense. You know, let's just talk about this a little bit. Let's talk about this because what Jesus referred to when he was in the wilderness being tempted of Satan, he said, What? It is. Hmm. If Jesus, the one that so many Christians, even Christians that say that this isn't final word, based their faith or their trust and their eternity in Jesus, and Jesus trusted what was written, I'm here to tell you, so can you. You can trust what's written. It doesn't need to be rewritten. It is written. You see where the things that he's quoted... He, 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 there's been mass, uh, massive uh, just, uh, just uh, stewardship, if you will, to try to make sure that this is the most accurate, okay? The Bible is the most accurate, back to what the, the, the ancient writings that we have, the, the most accurate, the most accurate, over and over and over. It's amazing how accurate this book has been after generation and generation and generation and generation. It's amazing. It's amazing that Jesus referred to this book. It is written. And, 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 and the, the prophecies that have been fulfilled and, and the, the foretelling of how. Why? Because he knew the end from the beginning. It, shouldn't, it doesn't amaze us. We just sang about it today. Omnipotent. Omniscient. Omnis, yeah, omniscient. Is all, yeah. Omniscient. Not, uh, uh, omnipotent is all-powerful. Omniscient. Sorry. I got that mixed up early this morning. It's early, you know. All right, let's keep going here. So um, you see this in Matthew chapter 4.10, um, again, where Jesus said uh, it is written. You see this in Matthew chapter 16. So how do you know what the enemy's after? Your enemy's after the word. Matthew 16.23. You remember when Jesus called Satan Peter, or Peter Satan? Well, why, why, did he, why did he, what was the key? to recognizing, recognizing Satan in that moment. Look at it. He turned and said to Peter, get behind me, enemy. Satan is enemy, adversary. Get behind me, enemy. You are an offense to me. Why? For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Satan is always after the word. When, it, when he, he called Peter Satan, he said, because your mind is yielded to man's way, Instead of God's way. That's the enemy. When, when you and me can come together and say, well, you know, let's just, it's, it's okay because of this and this. And, you know, everybody else is doing it. But it doesn't say it here. Satan is right here. He's, the snake is in the garden. 
When, when we could say, well, you know, God knows my heart. Do you? Because if, it, if, it's, if it's contrary to this, then Satan's doing the talking. And it sounds a whole lot like sensible. This, the word of God, you know, I, I have heard uh, this said, I, the Bible says I believe it, that settles it. Well, is it that simple? Well, kind of. Well, kind of, yes, it is. You might not like it because that means I have to submit and follow. But, uh, but that's what we are. If we're a Christian, we're followers or disciples. Now, let me, let me just define this word disciple in the Greek where you first see disciple. It's spelled like this in the Greek. Math, E-T-E-S. Math, which means to, to have to use your brain to learn. It's math, that's why we get math, right? It's where we get the word math. It means like, you know, it's like, oh, I've got to think. I mean, the, the gears are turning because you're trying to figure out this number. And, and, and all, of it, all of it is accurate. Math is accurate, right? It's math. And he says that if you're going to be a disciple, you're going to have to use your brain to learn and come under what he's saying as truth. You see this example with, with little kids when they hit kindergarten and first grade. The teacher can say something, and the kid hears it a certain way, even though it's not the way the teacher said it. But, but because that teacher holds this place of authority, and they're there to learn, and they've been using their thinking caps... They'll come home and they'll say to you, mom and dad, something that the teacher said, and you'll say, no, buddy, that's not the way it is. And then they'll say, yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? My teacher said so. And you're going to have a pretty hard time. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Convincing them that what, what they heard and what they learned wasn't truth. What, God's, what Jesus says is this, if you're going to be my disciples, you're going to have to put on your th thinking or your learning cap, and you're going to have to take this, my words, and you're going to have to learn them that this is the way. This is the way. All right, you know, Mandalorian, all right. All right. This is the way. Right here. This is the way. This is the way for your life. This is, the, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This is the way. It shine. You know what? It all, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And in all your ways acknowledge him. What do you say, Lord? What do you say, Lord? And he'll direct your paths. And he'll direct your path with the end in mind. He'll direct your path with the end in mind. Instead of just right now what I think now and all the crazy and the heartache. Look at this. Um, 2 Corinthians 2, 11. It says... We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. 2 Corinthians 2.11. It says, we destroy argument. Oh, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 2.11. I think I, know, I gave you 10.5. Um, but he says that we're, we're not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. We're not, that word devices there is the same word that you see. We take every thought captive. So you could say it like this. We're not ignorant of Satan's thoughts. We're not ignorant of the way that Satan thinks. You know what he, the way he thinks and the way he tells you and me? He tells us that God's thoughts aren't as good as your thoughts. And God's thoughts are holding out on what you're thinking you should be have. God's thoughts are not as good as your thoughts. Let's Satan should get an advantage for we're not ignorant of his devices. That word right there is this word, no, like Noel, but M-A with no L. N-O-E-M-A, which simply means Thoughts. We're not ignorant of the way that Satan thinks, the way that he strategizes, his, how, what he's going to use against you. Thoughts. Well, the Bible tells us that we are to take every thought captive and bring it to the obedience of Christ. Taking all those thoughts, all what are those devices? In other words, anything that would, would, would stand in opposition to this, we have to recognize who authored it. Again, we're talking about staying sharp. Now, I want to get to this, last, this, this. I said all this to say this. It's time that the church, you and me, be the church again with one another. And that we would not only hold this in high esteem in our own hearts, 
but that we would talk about it with one another. Amen. Proverbs tells us this. It says, um, it says, as iron sharpens iron, 2717, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. You know, it's not complex. It's iron and iron. If, if, it's crazy how many, how many knife sharpeners that are out there today. But you know, all that you really need is a steel. All that you really need or is a stone. And you can sharpen that edge. And you can be keen. Keen. A keen edge. A bright, a bright crisp edge. You can be sober. You can be keen. How are you keen? Well, you, you're going to have to sharpen one another. You know what that means? You're going to have to be in close proximity. It, it looks like Hebrews chapter 10 where it talks about, as you see the day approaching, let us not forsake assembling. Why? Be, he says because you're going to need to be close because you're going to need to be sharp. Yeah. And, and you know what we're going to need to talk about? We're going to need to talk about the word. And you know, it, it's okay if, you, if I was to say right here today, how many of you... Believe on Jesus for your eternity or for, for your salvation. I bet you I would see a ton of people stand up. And here's what I would say. Then here's the deal. You have just given, you saying you're a follower of Christ. Then this right here, and, and, and this to be brought to you, should not offend you. It should encourage you. This is not to offend you. As a follower of Christ, this is to encourage you. So when something gets out of order and someone says, uh, brings the word to you or you have a, a God talk, it, it, it's not to offend you. It's to encourage you. It's to sharpen you so that you have a keen edge and you're aware of where Satan's talking. If, if I'm choosing something that's contrary to what this says, then, then I'm not very sharp. Because this is truth. Two plus two is four. Four. Seven times seven is 47. No, it's 49 and it always will be. Even if you like the idea, you're just not, you're not sharp. Well, part of the reason we're not as sharp is because even in the church, we, we, we're afraid to tell somebody else the truth because we love them. No, we love us and we don't want them to be upset with us. But if, if I'm convinced that this is final authority in our life, and I'm here because I want to hear from the Lord and not just check a spiritual box, then somebody tell me when I'm walking off the cliff. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. Now, I'm not saying and advocating for a bunch of Karens in the church. But I am advocating for brothers and sisters. For sons and daughters, for mothers and fathers. I'm advocating that the church would be salt and the church would be light and we wouldn't hide under a bushel what we know is true so that it could give life and light to the house and to all those around. If it's not giving light to those who are called and set in the house, and the light doesn't only come out from the, pul the pulpit or the or the. Or the, the, the the altar, the stage, not the stage, because it doesn't just come out from pastor. You are. It is as if God is making his appeal through you. I'm advocating. And this, it starts like this. No, oh, I love this. It, this word, encourage, he tells us, and I, you know what? I'm just done. I'm done. You've probably heard me being done. I'm done with putting... God, in this teeny little box, and, and we're, we're learning so much throughout the week, and our, our lives are so inundated with so many things, and the pressure, genuine pressure that, that a guy feels up here on a stage to try to package it in with a bow and, and, and give you three points to get out of here. I can't, we're not doing that. Because we're disciples. We're, we're looking to learn. We're saying, Lord, teach me. 
teach me today. Show me. I'm standing, I'm standing in, in to, that you would teach me and that you would show me. And wow, the person on my right and the left and all these, this crew that I got sitting next to me, that I, there's a lot that I'm facing. Yeah, and guess what? You're equipped. And God's equipped you and he's, he sets you and you're in the right place at the right time doing the right things with the right people and they'll encourage you and you might not want to hear it but it's what I need to hear to keep me because the end's in, my, in, in his mind. So look, look at this. He says, this is uh, in, in Hebrews 10, 25. It says, when we talked about running a race and we talk about giving up, if you were reading the N, NIV, oh, it is. Don't give up. <laughs> you know why we give up going to church? You know why we give up going and only going when we serve? And uh, we, we're tired. You know how many times I hear we're We're tired. Well, maybe we got some other things in our life that we should be laying down instead of church. Instead of gathering together to, 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 to honor him and to meet with him. And that we would, maybe, just maybe, we're not supposed to give up. Maybe we're not supposed to give up. We're not supposed to quit. We're not supposed to neglect. Maybe, maybe the, even that word right there is a word to me to talk to my brothers and my sisters. Maybe they've been hurt, but God wants to make his appeal through you. Christ wants to make his appeal through you. So maybe, maybe some of that, even that healing, where as you speak God's words and as you share God, the heart of the Father. See, Karen's will just tell you what they know. But what we're talking about is we're talking about what does God say? This is so key that you and I would acknowledge that we have heard or that I'm, I, I acknowledge that I'm supposed to talk to them. I, I get that in my heart. I'm supposed to say something. I acknowledge that. Then here's my next question. How, Lord? When? Where? And before I even take it, this is, this is that, that, that prayer for even that moment to, to exchange. It's not just to bring correction to somebody. It's to encourage. Let's keep going here. Look at oh, so that. He says, let's not quit. Let's not neglect meeting together. as Some have made a habit. And that's the thing. Isn't it easy just to get in a habit of something? Just a habit. You're just like, oh, it's just a habit, right? Uh, but encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Let me tell you guys. The day is approaching of Jesus' return. It's getting closer and closer and closer. The things that are happening all over the world, the Bible talks all about it. So rather than being afraid, it's like Joseph Morris talks about, it's the two-minute warning. It's, it's time to run. It's time to not quit. It's not time to let up. It's time to press in. It's time to go all out. It's time to go for, it's time to make sure that the first is first, and even though I was, that was first, it's time to fight for first, and stay fighting for first, and not quitting, and, and not because I'm hurt. No, no, no. Father, thank you that, though I'm hurt, thank you that you're the healer, and you restore my soul, and you're the one that heals the brokenhearted. Father, I thank you for that. But he says, let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. That word encourage there is the, the same word that you get for paraclete. Or the Holy Spirit, except for instead of paraclete, it's parapaleo, which one that stands by to encourage and to cheer on. He says, let you and me be the one that stands by. Let me read it the, the, right from the Strongs. From close beside to call properly and to make a call close up and personal. You and I making a call close up and personable. personal. I, don't, I, I can't speak to some of you it, it, on my own because I don't have that close up and personal. But some of you have some close up and personal and you're not saying anything. We're not encouraged our conversation. In Malachi chapter 3, what a 16. Let, let it be one of like, let's fear the Lord again. Let's fear the Lord. Let's, let's honor the Lord. Let's, let's say, yeah, but this is what the word says. Yeah, but this is what the word says. So like maybe, maybe even within your own house and your spouse, with your spouse, Maybe there's certain things you want, and you know you've been wanting this, but this is what the Word says. So what are you going to do? We're going to do what the Word says, <laughs> with the end in mind, because He has the end in mind. He has the end in mind. With my children, He has the end in mind. 
It's not just a, it, it, generations. It affects generations. Thank you, Lord. It's Proverbs 27, 5 through 6. This is written. An open rebuke is better than secret love. It says this in the King James. Open rebuke is better than secret love. The next verse, verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. I'll tell you, be for, it's the truth spoken in love, I'll tell you, it's the most... It's the most blessed. And you know, at that moment, it might not produce exactly what, like you might not see ch 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 <laughs> You might not. But that's okay. Because you sowed the word. You're going to sow, I'm going to sow the word. And God will watch over that word to perform it. My, my, my job is to sow it in season. As we talk about this all the time, the light of God's word, it's a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. It's not to just blind somebody's eyes. There's nothing worse. Nothing makes you angrier than when someone, you're almost on them and they flash their brights right on you. You want to turn that truck around. <laughs> if you do that in the country, like in the country, like country hills of Oklahoma country, trucks turn around. <laughs> Straight up. And we're going to be pulled over on the side of the road. You ask Chip Brim about this. You'll be pulled over on the side of the road, and there's going to have to be some apologizing and some whatever, because otherwise it's going to get Western. <laughs> and that's how... The... All right, let's keep going here. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay, and we'll get, we'll get to this. So talking, um, you know... I'll give you a, a passage to number one uh, that'll start your approach. It'll start your approach. When the Lord gives you a cue, it's not just to sit on it. It is to pray about it. Um, and then there's probably another step. If you sense something that's not right, so many times we use this verse, uh, and I'll get to this other one in a second, but it says if you have ought in your heart, like in other words, something's just not right. It doesn't just mean that you're angry with them. It just means in my heart, something's out of place. Hmm. There's, hmm. Have you ever been there? You know, I mean, I've, as, as a pastor, I think that there's, there's this, in the gifts of the Spirit, which we're going to get to eventually here, uh, not, you know, in the, in the weeks to come, but how there's, he, he'll show you things. And, and not for anybody's demise or not, but it's to encourage and to help, right? But have you ever had that check or that cue in your heart that, hey, something's up? Something's up. And you just, you just think about something's up. Maybe you even say to your spouse, man, have you noticed Blah, 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 blah. I just feel like, yeah, I kind of actually, that does bear witness with me. Hmm. And that's all where we leave it. We can go to Colossians. This would be a good start. Colossians chapter 1, 9 and 10, for this reason, since the day I heard about you, we came into, we came into relationship because I heard about you, because, because the steps of the righteous man are ordered to the Lord. So the people that he's brought you into relationship with, whether it's through the buying of a house or selling of a house or, or maybe it's because your kids are playing ball and you're playing ball together because the Lord has ordered your steps at, at, and you're in the, the, the church where God's called you. He says, for this reason, since the day I, I, I've, I've heard, heard about you, I'm going to read this out of the BSV, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you, asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit for every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Here's a great prayer right here. When that comes, Father, I thank you right now. I just, I just lift him up before you. I'm asking you, because here's what happens is, this is a prayer for. This keeps you from being a Karen. This put, keeps you in that brother and sister, okay? And, and then it goes on, and then, so you can pray that prayer for, uh, that Paul prayed for the church at um, Colossia. Another one you can go to is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. And I pray that the eyes of their understanding, 
Because sometimes that's just all it is. How many of you uh, I want to just slam our hand with a hammer? Nobody. But the, if somebody, if, I've had it where somebody tells you, hey, watch your thumb. Oh, yeah, thank you. Your hand's getting awfully close to that blade. I mean, I, I, you value that. Somebody, he says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you might know the hope of the calling and the riches of his glory and inheritance in the, in the church um, for the saints. I'll tell you, this is so important. This is so important that, that the posture of even of sharing the, with one another is one of love and prayer for. So first pray. First, when he prompts you, first thing is pray. Number one, is the first thing is acknowledge. This is so, so many times the Lord's speaking to you and me, but we say, here's the, and I hear people say all the time, I, I can't hear from the Lord. Well, hearing from the Lord starts with when you do hear something, that you acknowledge it. Acknowledge. Acknowledge when he's done something good for you. Even this, here's a good start. When, when every good gift comes from him, like we should acknowledge that. Thank you, Lord, for that. And you know what you'll hear? You'll begin to hear him say, you're welcome. I don't know why these movies. Oh, Lord. All right, let's keep going, and we're almost done here. Again, I'm gonna, I want you to see it. Romans chapter 12, 2. Romans chapter 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, renewing. The way that God thinks is the way that God has thought from the beginning to the end. I want you to see and understand that, that the, the things, that, though, the, though they're, maybe they're more um, celebrated and, and in our face and not just tolerated, but celebrate, celebrated anymore, sin is sin, and sin was sin all the way back then in the garden to Noah's time. You remember how the earth had to be destroyed? Remember Noah and the flood? Okay, It wasn't just Sodom and Gomorrah. It was Noah it was also in that the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Like it wasn't just homosexuality. It was all kind of things, bestiality, all kinds of crazy. Okay, and God called it sin. Noah, so, all the way through, all the way through. God's laws don't change. He doesn't remodel anything. God, you know what he hates? This is one that's been big, big on me as of late. We need to be a church that walks in love. Now, what, what is love? It's preferring what God prefers. It's not some you know, euphoria, what the world calls love. It's preferring what God prefers. But one of the things, if you look in Proverbs, is God hates. And there, there's a certain amount of things he hates and what he despises. And one of them is how uh, it's a backbiting or a gossip and a lying brother. So you know lying? Backbiting? Gossip? God hates that. And you know what it should do to you and me? When you and I hear about somebody else, period, in any way that you could, you, your heart should go, Ugh. that's not good. That's not right. No, we're not doing that. Well, I just wanted to tell you about because we're going to believe God together. Shut up. No. No. Just say no. I'm not doing. I'm, I'm going to hold my tongue. I'm going to hold my tongue. I'm not going to talk about my spouse with another spouse person and share all of their weaknesses. Shut it. Building one another up in love. Say what God says about them. Say what God says. You know, thankfully, he didn't say, well, that Nate, you know, he blah, 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 and just tells all that, I, instead of calling those things that are not as though they are. And there's something I can tell you, I've seen it with my own kids. You can tell them all that, the, all that they've done, or you can call them all that God says they are. And you know what? It's amazing the difference of what, what happens in the ter, the, their performance. or their. The... Amen. So if you want to encourage one another, <laughs> come on, buddy, you got it. If you're at the game, man, quit missing your free throws. I mean, you're like one for six. He's standing up on the line. You're one for six. Come on, make your freaking free throws. Can you hear parents saying this? Come on. Or 
Because this is the kind of stuff that we want to tell somebody. Encourage, Hey, come on, buddy. You got it. You got it. Just put him in. You tell me. You tell me with the one that's in your corner. Which one helps you? Come on. I know you're down by 13. You're, you know, if you guys would have got a stop last time, you should have got a If you could have got a stop the last three times, but you said you're playing defense with your hands down. Do you think that helped him? Right, come on. Everything you got, boys. Come on. Come on. Hey, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. I know that. I know that this. Is, I know that's hard. But guess what? God's He's giving you all the strength that you need. I know that this looks hard. I know that this looks difficult. But let me tell you, He's not leaving you. He's not. And let, hey, I'm, I'll be here with you. I'll walk you right through it. You know, you can do it. You can do according to this. And guess what? You can receive. You can receive according to His will. Again, we're just talking about staying sharp. You know how you stay sharp? As iron sharpens iron. This word set on a shelf or only in the heart or only in the mind, I should say, didn't help anybody. It's only when I let the light out from under the bushel. It's only when the salt stays salty. It's only when the word of God is in my mouth and with one another. So I'm just, I'm advocating for this. I'm advocating um, today that we would sharpen one another and that God would come down and hear the conversations that we have, uh, one of honor and fear of him, and that we would speak of the, uh, of the Lord and his word as being um, true. Being true. And not just true, but authority. Psalms, remember, remember we were reading the word this year? Remember that we're memorizing these verses? Psalms 119 Verse 18, open my eyes that I might see wondrous things from your law. Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 40, verse 8, I delight to do your will, O Lord. Your, your law is written in my heart or have hidden in my heart. Proverbs 3, this is this week's, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, not sensible this is where he speaks. This is where this is written. This is where it's spoken and where it's written upon. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The brightest days for your family, the brightest days for every, the place, the relationships, it's found by keeping this up here. Keeping this Right here and right here. In our conversation, let, let the word of God be heard. With your children, these, these, these Bible memory verses that are on our, on our websites, on the, this, uh, this bookmark, if you don't have one, they're at the information desk. Uh, on the back, it just talks about soap, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Just a simple way to begin to open the word of God and help you, maybe uh, an acronym to, to, as you open the word, Lord, open my eyes that I might see wonderful things from your law or wondrous things. But it has this QR code that will take you right to where we're at reading the New Testament, one chapter a day this year. But all, as, in addition to that, there's those Bible memory verses that we're, we're not just picking verses out, just, oh, what would be a good one? Let's do Jesus wept, because that's two words, and we can remember that one. <laughs> but we're picking ones that is, are really setting a course for our house, for, the, for this church, and for, um, and for our children. It's important that I go over, that I go over with my kids when I get up, when I sit down. This is part, part of what, what the church, is, what we're here for. This is part of what a pastor and shepherd is to do and to help, is to help lead and guide you and help, help, feed, help feed you. It's not just a job, it's a calling. It's not just a job, but there's a grace. And there's a promise that he said he would give you pastors after his heart. So find the place in the church that, and the pastor that you place you to be because there will be a pastor after God's own heart for you who will lead you and feed you in wisdom and understanding. Kids, when you go in to make a decision for college, let it be said this, Lord, what do you want for my life? 
But in addition to that, where, where, and you're to move because there's this job over here and there's this job over here. You better find out first where you're supposed to be in your heart. Lord, where, is there a place I can be fed there? Is there a place you're calling me to? If God's calling you, if God's calling you, he's prepared a place to feed you. And to tend, tend you. And to care for your children. It's his promise. It's his goodness. It's his heart. It's the Father's heart. I think it's important that we know him as Father, not just as God. As God, as Father, and eventually as friend. But first, we got to get this first one right. God. We got to get God back in the God place. You can't, like, Dad can't be friend before he's first dad, before he's, I, be, moms and dads, if, if, if your kids are, you just want to make sure that you're friends, let me tell you, listen, listen, I know they might be up here, you got to get them, you got to, they have to first understand your authority, and then your love, father, and then friend. That order matters, first matters. Because let me tell you, if all it is about friend, being about friend, being about friend, your directions to them, they won't, they won't carry the weight that they're supposed to. You'll just get to be there with them in all the bad things. I mean, that's great. You can be there with them in all the bad things, but you could. the better thing would be that when you, when you say stop, they stop. And you don't have to be with them in that bad thing because they understood that word of authority. And so if you and I understand the word of this as authority first, then all of a sudden there's certain things that are just not, they're off limits in my life. Why? Because God said. That's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. Because God said. Well, yeah, but look at the apple. It's so beautiful and look at it. God said. That's all I need to know. But because if, if, if I entertain, if I entertain a thought, a device that is opposed to God's word, let me tell you, Satan will whoop you every time. Every time. Don't, you, don't be ignorant to Satan's thoughts, but those thoughts that you recognize that are in opposition, take those and bring them to the obedience of Christ. Well, you know what? I take authority over that thought in the name of Jesus. It might be the thought of like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I can cheat on my wife. It might be the thought, oh, it doesn't matter. I can do da, da, da. It might be, no, you know what? I take that thought. I rebuke that thought. I take it and I bring it to the obedience of Christ. Amen? Amen. Um, uh, I guess I know I'm not real good on all the order of things. Austin, you have some stuff? Thank you, Lord. Um, lordship. And, and just really the following following the Lord that just uh, man there's just so many places I want to still go today I just really feel like today was about an opportunity for decision uh, for you for me uh, to say you know what Lord there's some things in my life that I've in ways that I've chosen that are not your ways and today's a great opportunity to just say this Lord you know what I choose your way. Let's just do that and bow our heads and close our eyes uh, before we transition. You can stay up here, Austin. It's great. You know, maybe there's decisions that you've made, and maybe there are even decisions that have uh, that you've made a long time ago, and you, in a sense, are walking out decisions that are contrary to what God's written word said. Maybe there's, uh, maybe it's gossip, maybe it's backbiting, maybe it's, um, uh, I don't know, it could be sexual sin. But today, you have an opportunity to simply lay something, maybe it's hurt, where you need to lay that aside, that hurt, and say, Lord, uh, I'm asking for healing today. But maybe it's that sin and you need today, you need to make that, that decision that not my way, not the way I think, but what you say and what you think. 
But I just saw this moment and this day as a, just really a day of decision um, to get in line and come under his word and be sharp. And so just, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Um, and this is not a salvation prayer. This is a, uh, a prayer of consecration um, to bring our lives fully under God's word and that we would have his end for our children, for our marriages, for our lives. So today, Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. And we say, Lord, I give you my life. Just tell him, Lord, I give you my life. I bring it underneath the authority of your word. I ask you to open my eyes to see the wonderful things that your law holds for me. Thank you for the grace to will and to do according to your good pleasure. Thank you for finding me, for choosing me, and for desiring to use me. Father, make your appeal through me. Let your love that's in my heart come out and be activated toward others. To know you. To make you known. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you want to take a moment and do this. Um, and you say, I, I'm here today, but I, I've never given my life to Jesus. Or maybe the, today you're saying, I, I know I'm not right from with God. I know I've completely walked the other way. And I need to, I need, I, that, that prayer was one thing, but I, in my heart, I know I need to re, uh, re-give my life to Jesus today. I want you just to, with your, uh, I want you to lift your hand if that's you today. You don't know where you'd spend eternity. You never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Or you know you're saying, I got to give my life back to God because I've been doing everything my own way. And you got to make, make a declaration. I don't see any hands. I don't see any hands. But John, I'm going to lead you in a prayer, whether it's to those online or for somebody in here that didn't lift your hand, uh, lead you in a prayer of salvation. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth or confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, you'd be saved. So it's a simple prayer. And so I'll just lead you in this, and you just repeat after me. Say, Father, today I surrender to your Lordship. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to pay the price for my sin. I believe that he was crucified and he rose again. I put my trust in your son Jesus today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Awesome. You wrap this up. It'll be awesome. What a word.